Sorry, Lucy. Sorry, Lucy. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the first area meeting of uh, this uh, council year. Um, this year they're slightly different. And uh, you'll find out as we move along. Um, can I ask that people turn off their their phones um, so that we're not interrupted and uh, ask any remote unless they wish to speak as this can affect the quality of the meeting. The meeting is being live webcast and the recording stays in the council's website. You may also have uh, the uh, for using video conferencing equipment and for any speakers to be picked up, they need to come near to the owl which is sitting in front of me. Right, uh, welcome again everybody and I want to uh, advise you that with us this evening we have uh, Emma Wiggins, the Director of Regeneration and Nature. He's just on the marathon coming to, to uh, the meeting. Um, we've got the engagement officer, which is Janet Dart, next to me, and the active travel coordinator, Adrian Oliver, on the end of the table here. Um, also, welcome County Councillor Mike Whiting. And I'm um, looking around for representatives from parish and town councils. Um, Mike Brown. Yes, I'm from Queenwood Town Council. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Sorry, sorry. Yes. Kirsty Martin, Laysdown Parish Council. Thank you. Uh, Emma Judges and I'm on my Thank you. Barbara Twist. Hang on. Sorry, Emma Judges, which post comes from? Warden, thank you. Barbara Twist. Barbara Twist. Jen Jen. 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 Yes. Jeff Partis lays down and Warden Austin's. Jeff Partis. Both parish members. Jen lays down. Just check. Okay, thank you. Pick up. Yeah. Ben Woodsy, Municipal City Parish. Okay. Um, emergency evacuation procedure. A fire expected this evening. But if there is, the exit is the way you came in. Uh, follow me and we will get out quite well. Um, apologies for absence, please. Um, I have apologies from Councillor Andy Booth. Thank you very much. Um, members of the committee. Do any of you have any declarations of interest in this meeting this evening? No. 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 Okay. Uh, agenda item four minutes. Uh, so we're here last year. Um, we've all had a copy of the minutes of the meeting held on the 21st of February. Minute numbers 
674, 684, 17th of May, um, 39 to 40. Is that a correct record? Thank you very much. Next item, I would like all of the borough councillors to introduce themselves to uh, everybody here this evening. Um, I'm Ken Ingleton, um, and uh, I'm my sins of chairman of the Chippy Area Committee. Mike. Yeah, my name is Ken the members of Quinn will not Neil, uh, member for Shepherd Central. Yeah. Leanne. Leanne, member of the Shepherd East. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. 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 member for Shepherd East. Thank you. much. And to the fighting behind us. Well, I was thinking reading until Sandy Penn sat in front of me because the acoustics are appalling. I can't hear a word you're saying. I can hear you. And to the Harris Sullivan Council, she went to sport. Thank you. Hayden Ford, Council of Thank you very much. On that day, Council of Court, Mr. Pearson was. Thank you. That takes. Oh. Well, I'm Sheila's, um, I'm Sheila's Town Council and this is the Parish Council. Um, thank you. Thank you, Dolly. And online we've got... Uh, we've got Councillor Mark Tucker and Councillor Elliot James of Councillors. Would you like to introduce yourselves, Councillors Tucker and James? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm uh, Councillor Tucker. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't be there this evening. And I'm also Sheppy Central and Vice Chair of this committee. Councillor Elliot Jays, um, Sheppy Central, Ward Councillor and a member of Minister Parish Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now move on to item six, which is matters arising. Um, you've all seen a copy. These are items that are actually being dealt with currently. Are there any items that anybody wants information on or uh, comments? Yeah, that's not all the information we'd like to show, which is connected to the Okay. So just to update the, the committee, I think last time I spoke around the Equality Bus Partnership um, that's run through Kent County Council. Um, and we were waiting on information about how that was to be, I suppose, evolved into what they're calling an enhanced partnership. Still no further information on that. I've been waiting from KCC. I think this is all down to just lack of resources generally. Um, and I, I imagine as well, they were also waiting for confirmation of funding from government. And so I'm assuming no news is not good news, <laughs> not the good news, but they have not yet contacted me to to establish how we may want to go forward with that. When I know more, I'll let continue to update. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd 
through you, Chair. I don't disagree with that. And we've spoken, Ashley, and it's on the list of condition surveys, but there's a long list through the council, but it's there to do the separate ones because it was done jointly before. So I've spoken to Deb Hardy about it. So it's it's on the list to do. So I'll get an update in terms of timing. Thank you. Mark. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. About the CTTV in Quinton, we are aware that there's been a rise in the ASBM in, in town since this CCTV went. And I just, I appreciate that it's a scare that it also needs to be shared about. Um, my simple plea is that we uh, replace it with the bank quickly as quickly as we can. Um, and I just wonder whether there's any further comment other than what's in the minutes, Chairman. And uh, I'm afraid it's as it, it is as it is in the update around having to have the um, not only the incidents being of sufficient level, but also the redeployment of the stock, which we, as they say, is low. So again, that's something on the list of things to keep observing. I would suggest. Yeah. There's a pretty good incidents because it's on the type of activities. So in uh, Winter, it's, it's very quiet. All winter, we started yesterday, the, the, the weekend. Someone took a tip of light down to the causeway with a, a great the speed bumps in the now. We've had a, a, a kids picking up on the front of the wall, come away from the stairs. And then there's a lot of things going on again, and they bring it around that causeway to become an issue again. The whole thing is we've been there, I mean, we can't. Would be criminal to say to get back to where we were last year when we know what's going to happen on the same one. Yes, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, at a previous um, meeting that we had with the um, community safety partnership, there was a talk of if we needed to be on the CCTV camera, it was possible it needs to be funded. Um, if that's the direction we could go down, it could be something that we could try and enjoy more fun with the borough council and the parish council. Yeah, and I think that again, welcome to this conversation if that is a possibility. But again, it's the, it's the difference between that permanent and mobile. But I think that we, I'll feedback the the information that you've given Simon, and um, we'll um, see whether or not there's any movement on that. Um, and I'll feedback directly that's okay we'll not wait till september's committee thank you thank you that's all right um uh that's not one coach party um still get people to be able to achieve the kind of the world party um i noticed that the incident is we've been given this admission that actually uh pretty town based um, and actually, I'm um, quite surprised to see that the chip on shore that I mentioned is a, a possible um, way of solving a ship. That makes sense. Okay, so you can put that there. So, in previous conversations, ship on shore has actually been through committee, and the agreement was to look at coach parking, but also um, that would be paid for rather than, I think this is a slightly different um, issue. So this is more around the visitor economy and coaches that come in through town. So obviously we've got this I and mean, it's just about getting the resource to be able to deliver the project, which we, we don't have in team at the moment or certainly hasn't been prioritised within team. Um, the ship on shore decision was to change it to actually have, as I recall, chargeable parking um, and um, linking with the, the, I'm going to say boat club. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so yes, so it's a slightly different thing. So that's not going to, that's shifted in emphasis. So there's sort of two different projects there. I seem to remember there was some discussion about the size of it, whether it was yeah. big enough for yeah, a country. Yeah. I just watched because I'm following that. I just wanted to add up. I wanted to add up. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to um, ask about the update on the East Church um, shoreline uh, that we need because the church and 
um, means we share this quite a few times that we're trying and see so on. Part of self is a rich energy connection there. And one of the more popular ones that we picked up whole sad elements that we were going to should have been collecting, uh, which were community parts, it's a stacks of old uh, carpet. Um, and one of that most stunning is in fact in San I know it's a mixed church matter, but it's an island matter. Um, and I know that you said it's a multi agency group, but I thought this might be better at lobbying and impressing the one agency. So the, our tax powers are picking up um, um, what's going to happen. It will affect our visitor economy, it will affect our wildlife, and why would we not let my children swim? Of a shaking hill, and I'm quite happy to, to say that I want to do that. And, and I think that maybe say the one agency route to put it in, I think maybe we could push hard on that if that's possible to. Um, yeah, sorry, I understand that's a bit pain. Um, and the last one I want to say, but you know, they're really living up. Um, uh, up there? Yes. Yes. Some point. Um, Play, so, any more questions to that bit? That's my question. Um, oh. uh, yeah, I've an update on the last one. The eight back in the piece of the phone. That's been the start. Those ones have been happening on the world. The concern about the destruction. Yeah, if that's the one that's looked at, it's one of the only areas of real. Natural beauty and things that are left aren't maintained, so to speak. Uh, number 13, the answer to travel upgrade as well. That will come later. That will come later. Thank you. And through you, Chair, the beach up proposal, um, there is actually a report going to the first environment committee, which the top of my head, I think, is the well, it's definitely the end of June, beginning of June, 29th of June. Thank you, Councillor White, who will be there as vice chair. Um, so if you're interested, then I would urge you to read the paper that will be coming out and being on the pub, available for the, to the public to read. So uh, Is that going to be not yet. Okay, thank you. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. It's region committee. So that will be the beginning of July. So it's not quite yet available, um, okay. but it will be. Okay, and that's the beach up um, policy and um, proposal to tender for the new beach huts at, at Minster and um, those down. Thank you. That's true. Um, yes, sorry, just to add in um, about the thing for us, we've been sat here, um, there's a meeting going on in the field hall, um, and the attendees have had a rock run through their window, and um, once they sat in that meeting, so, you know, Queen was full of anticipation, needs to be a top priority. Assuming everyone was okay. But yeah, right. have they reported yeah, yeah. Yeah. They need to or just online at the moment? Uh, they've reported it yeah. and, and they've taken pictures to children and they'll take them out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I wasn't meant, I don't know where it comes into the board. Yeah, sentence. They've removed any well, uh, I'd like to, I, I, you know, we've seen that as negative, we are, we are, we are. But rather than see it as negative here, I'd like to put forward a positive proposal that we approach um, uh, community policing at 12 o'clock. If they can't make town comparisons, they come to an area meeting and they give us something. We know if I start from the news due to the in July, it could be a new star, but it, it, it could be the councillors and they have the opportunity to speak to all the parishes here. If we know they're coming, we can find out question. And, and I think that we think we probably be accountability that the man will come to the town of parishes. The borough commander used to come to the area meetings. Who's that? I'll see you. Anyway, uh, I, mean, I mean, I could make a suggestion that the chair writes to whoever that might be to ask whether or not they attend this, 
when we know how limited their resources is another thing, but it wasn't a harm in perhaps our grant. We'll grant you a lesser. Yeah. 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 Okay, uh, active travel update. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for letting me spend this few minutes talking about active travel and where we are at the moment. Um, one key issue that's not been addressed yet is Thornhill. And uh, whilst we have a request in for that to be resurfaced, the water that's currently in my left shoe is evidence that it hasn't happened yet. Um, so that should be on the list of things to do. Um, active travel fund four. Uh, I spoke about last time at the area committee, and we had uh, three bids going forward. Two of them made a short list, uh, which uh, were the ones from Tamersham and the one from Sheppey. But the final list that went to the to travel interns just included the Tamersham one and the Sheppey one didn't make it to the final cut. That was actually due to the change in the funding nature of the the, the, the feed. So it was focused more on shovel ready schemes rather than development schemes, which the Shepherd one was more of a development scheme. However, we have received uh, funding from the Capability and Ambition Fund, and that will allow us to appoint consultants to carry out a feasibility study on improving the connectivity of Minster, Sheerness, Halfway, and Queenborough. Um, and looking at things like um, uh, connections from the Sheerness lines down to halfway, connections from the seafront into Minster, uh, connection from Queenborough uh, Road to uh, Cowstead, and, and other elements that would actually make it much easier to walk, wheel, and cycle between those four combinations. The the local cycle walking infrastructure plan is progressing and we've, we've received additional funding to actually do a lot more data work, much more technical, which is really great because actually that gives us better evidence for when we're applying for funding for any of our schemes. Um, the Shepherd Light Railway Greenway project is still progressing. They've had an engineer review the options for crossing the island and uh, that's resulted in a proposed route and they're now seeking funding to develop that into a detailed route mapping, land searches, and um, some initial designs, as well as uh, some advice on negotiating with landowners. So that'll be a major part of the project. Um, separately, uh, we're working with HMP Swell Side at the moment on a uh, cycle recycle scheme, and we'll be uh, issuing our first bikes from that scheme over the next week or so. Um, and we're partnering, 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 <laughs> partnering with since checking matters are involved. And we are looking to distribute those bikes to people who really need a bike for transport. Um, if you have Connections with any charities that you think would be able to identify people like that, please let me know. And moving on, Cycling UK would have been instructed by Kent County Council to focus their work on five districts in Kent. Uh, and I use the word districts loosely because two of those districts are Swayham and Sheffield. <laughs> so we get two bites of the chairman which is really good. Uh, they will continue their work on helping people to uh, ride more confidently, to fix their bikes confidently. And uh, there's also the community cycle club that they've set up on Sheppey, which they want to extend to this end of the island too. So again, we're looking for partners who would be interested in working with Cycle UK on encouraging uh, and helping people to cycle more. And finally, and this is a plea to anybody who's got contacts with schools, Kent County Council has um, a capital grant fund of £5,000 for every school that would like to improve uh, walking, cycling, and wheeling to school. Uh, things like improving footpaths, things like 
scooter parking, bike parking are all available. However, we're on a very tight deadline. Uh, the deadline for grants applications are on the 23rd of June. So if uh, you have contact with schools that you know would like to have some of this investment, then please get them to look online through the Jan Busters website. Uh, they need uh, either to have an up-to-date travel plan or be prepared to do an up-to-date travel plan. Most of the schools across the borough, the 50 centre schools across the borough, do not have an up-to-date travel plan. So do a for a travel plan. And um, lots more things become available. And, and there are other funding streams that come out through that process um, if you have if the schools you've told me about. So that's my update. Happy to take any questions. Oh, you've got a template for traffic plans. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, what can I ask me plans? Like the lower road savings connected to the island. As I understand that. And I totally agree, connecting Queenborough, Minster, Sheer Desert, that's really, really important. Yeah. But at the same time, people that live in Minster, Sheer Desert, Queenborough, might like to cycle out to Lazer. It's, it's a really nice area. We've got our cave, we've got our stream shops, we've got business chip yep. shops, yep. we've got a lovely bench. But if you wanted to, to you know, think about your car on the footprint when you're travelling from one end of the island to the other, yep. actually, you can't, because for the local roads, it's not safe to cycle on. Uh, I, 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 when I first arrived, uh, one of the things I did was cycle on the road and they don't have to It is a dreadful road to cycle on. It's not a great road to drive on either. And I think there's lots of issues that we need to address. And perhaps our Kent County Council members can, can actually start pushing a bit on this as well because. We need to improve not only the ability to give people the choice, the ability to uh, cross the island on under their own speed, but we also need to improve that road generally for, for traffic because actually if you're driving on that road, it, the conditions are pretty poor too. And it's a very heavily abused road. Um, and I'm sure there's been counts in the past that will prove that, and counts that do prove it today. Look, just look at the amount of uh, traffic that is generated by the prisons, and that's just the prisons, let alone the holidaymakers who are going to be here shortly, let alone uh, the people who live here most of the year round. <laughs> so, yeah, there are issues on that road. In terms of getting a route for walking and cycling, don't use that road. I used power lane today, that was okay. Um, but I'm guessing that's okay because we're out to see some just at the moment. Uh, but we do need a separate walking, wheeling, and then cycling route that would run parallel with the road. In 1964, the old Sheffield Rural District Council started reconstruction of the lower road from later. And they come as far as Bayview. And that's where you see the line in the road. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the line still there? Yes. What, what happened was that the rural council was amalgamated and uh, everything gradually moved over the years further and further away. So it became no longer a uh, necessary road. Anyway. Angela. Yes, I might have misheard, but I thought you said um, KCC is giving 5k to each school or making available cycling parks. I thought you said scooter parks. Okay, are you talking Sorry. about the illegal scooters? <laughs> Just the normal ones that you use? Your yeah, the ones that the kids use. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, just, uh, the kids under the road test. not the Yeah, I, I, I wasn't going to speak chairman, but uh, I got the chapter on the bus. So, uh, <laughs>
I absolutely agree. Yes. The, the, the East West connection on, on, on that road is not good enough. Um, I don't know where the money is going to come from. It costs 1.7 million to put the bit between Cowston Corner and uh, the Thistle Hill. And did you mention that in your act? A compliant landowner who gave the land um, to put the cycle path in. Yeah. There is no don't. It's going to take 15 million quid at least and lots of compliant landowners to do anything about, about the road. Jenkins Hill is probably the worst uh, section of that road. Um, so I don't know quite where the money is coming from, but I, I just pick, pick up on the point that you made. Faversham had a trouble when he escaped. We need to develop. And the same happened um, in. in there's a place to be able to move to all. Um, a scheme was built up and sat on the shelf for years. And then when the government suddenly said, we've got some spare cash, who can spend it? Yeah. The Swale Council come and KCC come forward and said, well, we've got this still on the shelf. Let's do that. And it happened. So I think that Swale and KCC need to work together to understand what the shuffle ready scheme it took like so that the moment the government come and it always does this, and it's all governments over the years they suddenly say we've got 100 billion pounds to give away who's spending tomorrow. And unless you've got that thing sitting on the shelf, you can't spend it. So I think that we need to work at KCC and at Swallow to get a, a plan of what that road would look like with a side of the side of it. So people can cycle safely, drive safely, yeah. and then walk it through. Yeah. But as the link of the eye, why not? But we can't do anything unless we work that scheme up. And that's going to take officer hours. And we have through the minutes, a number of things that aren't getting done because there's no resource. That's why I was doing it. So we just throw it back at officers, we throw it back at councillors in Swell, like me and those here, and say actually we need to make the money available for the officers who've got the time to work these schemes up. Yeah. And otherwise we're never going to get anywhere and we'll be sitting here in 10 years time talking about the same thing we were sitting here 10 years ago talking about. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, Flagsham just won that bit because they had drawings and we made up a bit that, you know, could be successful. We knew what the right buttons to press uh, with those drawings. And those drawings were actually funded by Fashion Town Council. And you know, this, so this has got to be a partnership thing. So we'll be doing that this sort of feasibility study in, uh, in, in, the, in the west of the island. We could certainly look at doing more work in the east of the island, uh, but it's got to be a partnership of Swell Borough Council, Kent County Council, and the Parish Councils and Town Councils. And, and that's what was successful. That's why the bid for fashion was successful. It was all of those people working together. Um, yeah, I just want to throw in another aspect that's not been discussed about the Bower Road, because obviously we're a very isolated one road in, one road out in the parish. Um, well, speaking as well, it's one road in, one road out. When that road gets closed because of emergencies, we are cut off. You cannot get ambulances down here. You can't get fire engines down here. It is really, really not safe for the residents to rely on one access road that's so small that you, I mean, we've had it last year. It was the seven, the road was shut off for seven hours because of a near fatality. So it was happened for the rest of your time. Yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah, I, so when we're talking about putting this shovel resin plan in place, there needs to be included in it some sort of emergency access as well. I just want to make sure that that's, that's put in as well, so that a fire engine can just bypass any traffic that's on that road. The, from a 
actual total point of view, the ideal would be to put in a parallel cycle walking with emergency access bar. That means we get massively upgraded facilities for walking, reading, and cycling because you've got to get a fire engine on there as well. But that would be the, the ideal solution. Absolutely. They said that the island has been known as the killing gods. Gods of that for Yeah. 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 On and off the island. Bobby. Basically, on the planning of the calculations. And um, the rest of what's going to told that the government will make her adjustment that uh, takes you to our planning school, where actually the planning school is going to become a full team planning application. And um, I haven't seen that happen yet at Town Parish or do you know that's going to happen? If so, obviously, I understand that about schools having 5,000 hours to, to apply for that work, so it would be on major planning applications for the oil fields. One of six money has been spent at twice the board of the bank rather than coming back to our own school for them to decide where it is they can have. I understand it might be different, that might be more than five, six months of capital investment rather than that, or this is planned. But it, it's always the case. So, for instance, I'm not quite there's a legitimate question if you start asking that. Is that going to be prioritised for the new directors? Because the national point, the same thing can happen to us. Or that's not even logical. So, Act Travelling became a statutory consultee on 1st of June. So, they are now. Uh, we are now have to refer all developments over 150 units to Act Travel England. Uh, they reckon that's going to be 15,000 20 applications a year. They're, they're, the team they've got means that each individual planner at Act Travel England will be doing one scheme every other day, which is heavy going. So, so, but they have also provided uh, our councils uh, and authorities, should I say, with uh, a toolkit. So that helps the whole process move much smoothly, much more smoothly. Um, but they're there really to, they are going to be acting as, as consultees as well. Jan Buster's website. So if you search Jan Buster's Kent County Council, take you straight to there. You can see what schools have it as they you can see their absolute plan. And most of them are several years old. Um, but also the really easy QA process they go through. Uh, it's all broken down into chunks. It really needs uh, someone who's worked at the school for a while. 
to do it because they can do all these things off the top of their head. Yeah, it, it, and it is basic stuff. Yeah. Third spot of play, all that sort of stuff. Okay, thank you very much. We'll, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, can we move on now to uh, an update on levelling up? Um, and not. Thank you, Chair. And it's quite a brief update because um, since I think our last meeting in March, we I think the update then was that we were waiting on government to um, issue us our memorandum of understanding and all the paperwork that we need to sign to receive the funding. Um, we received that yesterday. So um, what I can tell you since we met in March is that we have successfully appointed two officers that will be managing the project, Dean Radnor um, and uh, Zoe. Thank you. Um, it's only because she just got married. So, so, I know. Um, so that's great news. So it means that we have a team that can now focus on getting the governance and the project um, all, the, all sort of the, the paperwork and project plans in place. We have a steering group that meets regularly. Um, Regen committee met in March as well and appointed a, a member working group for the project. Um, and um, we have an external steering group that includes the college, um, Sh um, Healthy Living Centre, Sheffy Matters, and all of those stakeholders that are involved in terms of the actual project. Um, Zoe is the communications engagement officer, so she's literally just started about a month ago. Um, so what we're doing is developing our comms and engagement plan. And so the idea will be that we come with a, well, the team come to meet you in September with a better update. So I think we would have certainly pushed a bit more forward by then. Um, so that's it in a nutshell for the moment. And I think any other that sort of more detailed conversation is probably best place in September. We were hopeful for a ministerial visit tomorrow, but I heard they've just cancelled. So that's hot off the press. I don't know if I'm officially meant to have said anything, but I'm sure that some of you might have been aware. So that's a bit disappointing. But certainly the um, Department of um, d are levelling up are really interested in our project. Um, and we have regular meetings with their teams to sort of go through, as I say, the, the memorandum of understanding and various different governance and documentation that they expect from us, which, as you can imagine, I think I said last time is pretty complicated. So I think that's probably it. And we are keen, as I said before, to continue to engage with you, um, Parish Town Councils, um, so that we've got that engagement going through going forward and that we can involve people, at least make people aware of what's happening so that people feel like they can be part of it and then they know what's going on. And again, I really do hope that, you know, as much as it's 20 million pounds, we think that's a lot, it won't go far, but it's the first phase which are of what I hope will be further investment on the island. So, you know, we can, we can start with that and see where we go. So, see. Oh, and there's Monique. Um, so I don't know if anyone wants to ask me any questions. Sorry. Um, well, really, thank you very much for your response. Sorry, I'm still learning the content. So thank you for responding to my question for me. The thing that I'd like to wrap with is, on the, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a bigger push in September, because you know you want to make is there any way that we could possibly look at moving the early committee to share data uh, for that particular committee so that we would be able to offer that potential impact to the students' residents in that particular meeting? And if I start to that possible, happy for me to. Um, yes, I, I understand um, you raised that yesterday, I think, with uh, one of my colleagues. We will look into it. We need to see if it's a suitable building. Um, I would imagine it does have Wi-Fi there, but also parking. You know, people need to be able to park and access and so on. So we will look into that as an option, certainly. But if not, we'll try and find somewhere near. Well, yeah, we did think Masters about Master's House. House. I'm looking into that as well yes. uh, to see if... Yeah. Sure. 
and if people haven't seen it, it's, it's now open in terms of you know this space, which is lovely, fantastic. So it could be that we can see if that's available. Yeah, actually, that was that was a now, I know that additionally, maybe like she had some of the fine foot and then decided that it would take up too much of the weight of the application potentially and it kind of got out of feeling. But it was a quite nice it's a phase two project. Mm -hmm. um, we did it. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that on the council update, there was a, a, a national of opening up for support for swimming pools. I might have read it wrong, but is it something we've possibly considered? So I know we're doing that in the field, but where's the yeah, disappointment? Yeah, I, I think that's the house. Um, Sports England are opening a fund for what sounds like small capital stroke of revenues, bits of swimming pools. Sheerness needs a new swimming pool, which is a capital. Fund of at least 12, 15 yeah. million. The, um, the amount that uh, sporting women are making available is this certainly much, much smaller than that. For, as I have already asked if we would be putting in a bid in our area, which includes Fashion, uh, those of Sydney and Sheffield or Swales, and Fashion is run by Trust. Deborah took the AP into my authority as there was during the COVID period for the support. Swell has to put a bid in for three. So I sent a separate bid from Mr. Young. So I've already asked on this if we're likely to be putting a bid, which certainly won't be enough for me or yeah, just to be a bill ready. And minor, these days, minors cost an arm and they have the councillor White, that's not to say that we're not looking at what options we've got for the pool. It's just as that's a significant, significant chunk of funding, capital funding. Um, and that's to be discussed with the new administration about what they may or may not want to do. So that's you know a conversation that needs to be had um and a longer term project, much longer term. It's like yeah, oh well, definitely, definitely. I would just like to say, because I use some things for volunteer on a regular basis, and I spoke to the manager there, and she is absolutely desperate for any funding she can get, because basically any funding that goes towards there, you can't really always get everything, but goes towards the swimming pool, and say, well, shells have been redoing, there's tiles falling off the walls, it's the paint falling off the walls, the plaster's falling off the walls. It needs a jolly good overhaul. So any, even if it's just a couple of grand and there's some new buckets, anything to help because they're the ones that get it in the neck of the customers who are complaining. Yeah, so would you mind turning your microphone off again, please? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on then to Item seven, which is the achievement report. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so you'll find um, the achievements report in the agenda pack, um, and this is going to be presented at the next full council meeting on the 21st of June, um, and as this is a requirement uh, in the area committee's terms of reference to submit a report to full council. Um, as we've got a, a host of new councillors um, after the elections in May, we thought it would also be a good idea at this round of meetings uh, to present the report to all four area committees as it gives a bit of background into the committees uh, and uh, sets out how they've evolved since their inaugural meetings in September 2020. Um, as the report explains, one of the objectives of the administration formed in 2019 was to diffuse power among members and improve public engagement in decision making and area committees were set up to help achieve this objective. Um, as well as the ward uh, committee members for uh, the, the each area, um, 
and parish and town councillors, members of the public and representatives of local organisations are invited to uh, attend and take part in the meetings. It's, it's not just the area committee members that take part, it's, it's everybody can take part in the meetings. Um, they provide people in the community with the opportunity to speak direct to their councillors, local councillors, and to raise issues that are of concern in the area. And the report does set out some examples of issues um, that have either been resolved by um, officers at Swell Borough Council um, or they've been escalated uh, and brought to the attention of organisations, partner organisations who are responsible for whatever the problem um, might, might be. Um, we've also found that they are a very useful way to provide updates on projects coming up in the area and to consult with the community. Um, the first year of area committees took place in the pandemic when it was not possible to meet face to face. Um, but the ability to attend meetings remotely uh, proved very popular. Um, when it was possible to start meeting face to face, a lot of people were keen to continue attending the meetings remotely, though it was decided to trial hybrid meetings uh, in community venues so that we could we could get out to, to where people live. Uh, make it easy for people to travel in rather than going to Swale House. But obviously not everybody wants to come along um, to a meeting. So we, we bought the app, um, which is mostly quite effective at, um, for people to attend remotely and um, listen to and take part in the meetings. Um, for the first three years, area committees were allocated funding. Um, they each set work plans, which were used to develop priorities and criteria for awarding funds for projects and activities. And again, the report sets out uh, in detail how the funds were operated, um, and it lists how a total of £534,000 worth of funding was allocated across the four area committees over the three years to a wide variety of projects overseen by both external organisations and some internally led by Swell Borough Council. As part of the budget setting process for 2023-24, members had to consider how to deal with the budget gap, but this unfortunately um, resulted in funds not being available to allocate the four area committees this year. Uh, I'm going to move on to another item in a minute, which will look at how area committees can still set priorities, but without funding. Um, before um, we go on to that, I just wanted to ask uh, the chair and Emma, do you have anything you wanted to add about reflecting over the the um, last three years? No, I think I, I was involved in the writing of it, so we were quite happy with the report. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Well, it's a comment, Mr. Chairman, that the best Sheffield area community I have attended since since we've had them in the last four years um, was the one where the Leaving Council asked each of the area committees to take an item on education. And the meeting that we had, the Sheffield area meeting that we had when we had um, Marissa yeah. Yeah. Um, from Casey Sealong to explain in words in one syllable that woman is so good. She's, she knows her, she knows her stuff. Um, it was a very well attended and a very well received, although I'm sure there were people in that room who clearly got hold of the wrong end of the stick. She was there to inform us. Um, and my brother worked with people who didn't quite understand and tried to give her a bit of me. That was the best meeting that I've attended at the Sheffield area in the last four years. And the reason I say that is because it didn't involve in any, anyone coming and said, Can I have some money for this, that, and the other? It was about the issue affecting this island and that the vast people on the island were interested. It doesn't need, you don't need to have money to have, be able to have your say on key issues. Affect you and yours. Yeah. Thank you. I think in the past we've, um, when we had area meetings before, we did have speakers from various areas of public life, 
um, and we benefited a lot from their attendance. And personally, I think that looking forward, uh, we won't be allocating money to different people, but it gives us an option to do similar things to uh, what Angela just mentioned with, with various speakers. Right. Yes, uh, thanks, Joe. I, I, I agree with Angela. I think um, as a forum for people to raise the questions, receive information, um, this is a good forum. Um, from my experience of other areas across the council and across the, uh, the borough, actually the Sheffield Area Committee is probably, um, I, I would suggest, uh, the most effective, effective in doing that. That said, you know, we talked about half an end quickly. I thought it was wasted because we just simply acceded to people's request. Can I have a final for this? Can I have uh, oh, it wasn't wasted. And if it was wasted, then that's a bit of a failure. And if it wasn't wasted, then it's a shame we still haven't got that money coming forward uh, to help those other causes that we as I think is a good thing to spend our money on. So um, I agree. You know, there's a lot of hats get thrown in the ring and take a penny for this and penny for that. Um, if they were worthy causes, then that's half a million quid of taxpayers' money you shouldn't have spent. And if we spent it wisely, because it was worth it, then it isn't it a shame that the administration hasn't been able uh, to give us forty thousand pounds or whatever it is for this year. We spend it on those things that people on the other ship if it can be important. So um it's uh, this isn't a political forum, um, and I, I hope it doesn't become one. But it, it, you can't have to take the need to Thank you. Yes. Can I just add, when you're saying about that, just everyone in this room right now have got their feet on all the amounts that was actually come from the secretary area in that name for the new drawing in this hall. So, yeah. yeah. It, it, I, personally, I feel that. A lot of schemes have benefited. So. Yeah, but no, I think it's through you, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. And that's why I say it's a shame. If it's, it's been spent, then it's a real shame that we haven't got that funding moving forward. But that's a decision that others have made. Time to change you. Okay, I think we're going to have to. If there's no more questions, are you happy to move on to the yes. next item? Okay, so the next item does link up um, with this. And um, again, following on from the discussion about there no longer being funding available. Um, however, each area can uh, still agree what the main priorities should be um, for, for Sheppey. Um, and this can be fed into and influence the corporate priorities in the new corporate plan. So one of the first tasks for the new council is to create a corporate plan which will set out what the council wants to achieve over the next four years. And this will make sure that the council resources are allocated in an accountable and effective way. So area committees, all four area committees are being asked to have an input into the corporate plan at an early stage by outlining their own aspirations for their individual areas. Um, the aspirations of this area committee could be issues that are the responsibility of Swell Borough Council um, or of external organisations um, that which the council could try to influence. Um, they could also be ambitions the area committee would like to work to in the future. Um, but when considering what the aspirations should be, it's important to bear in mind the challenging budget position, which is likely to continue over the next few years and the capacity of um, Swell Borough Council to, to deliver them on top of the previously agreed workloads. Um, we're going to do something a bit different this evening, um, but before we go on to that, I just wanted to check whether uh, either Emma or the Chair wanted to add anything to what I've just, how I've just introduced this. 
it's going to be good to get into the activity. If you've never done something no. like this before, this can be interesting. Um, what I would urge is I'm really interested and eager to hear what you guys are going to be saying. If I could ask you to try and keep it as strategic as possible, all I'm going to say. <laughs> but let's let's try and see how we go. Okay, so what we'd like to do, please, is um, if you could split into groups of about four or five, it's up to you, it doesn't have to be four or five, but however you feel comfortable, splitting into groups. Um, and I'm going to um, hand out some sheets which have got some questions on here to help guide your discussion. Um, and uh, if, so if you could have spend about 10 minutes or so uh, just talking through what you feel um, the, the priorities should be for Sheppy. Um, and then at the end, we'll ask one person from each group. So if you can nominate one person from your group to feedback and then as a whole, um, we, we can listen to the priorities. So I'll come round with um, the sheets. Um, if you'd like to get yourself into it. And people online, um, if you bear with me, I'll put the questions up on the screen so you can put ideas into the uh,
Can't hear anything. Many apologies. Clear about some of these things before we start because it's the external services. I think the chairman is a little bit um, misleading. So I think if we want more money for buses, then we have the London government to give the bus companies money. Um, there are counties like Buckinghamshire that haven't run any bus services in the way that came to subsidise this site. Places like Buckinghamshire haven't done that for donkey shoes. So there are no subsidised services. So, so, that's, so, uh, so when we come to things, it, 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 hopefully, Chair, a uh, slide tipping, stuff that we should focus on. Uh, slide tipping, which I think is a swale thing, um, and that does include the industrial slide tipping that's going on at East Church Cliffs. Mm. Because it is like if you something you should perhaps be in 40 ton trucks, 20 ton a day, it's slide tipping and then chuck it over the cliff. Um, and the other areas, I've named is another spot for that. Uh, CCTV, I suppose we discussed that earlier in Chairman. Um, uh, in built inspection in our room. And one of the things that um, we think that KCC could get better at um, is sorting out some of the, the HCPs for those children with special educational needs. It shouldn't take years to get years to get a, an assessment and to get the help that um, that those children need. And the other thing is that external agencies are GP coverage. Yeah. Uh, this end of the island is East Chevy got one dollar for four thousand patients. And the government suggests it should be somewhere between 1,200 and 2,000 patients per GP. Um, and I think we need to really bash the health service uh, about that. Um, other changes, we talked earlier about the lower road and the type of ways, I think I'd throw those in under question uh, three. And under question four, transport is a major issue. But it is down to the bus companies, and I think that we will be working with the bus companies to get them to improve the service. Not simply ignoring, um, as we saw a reader recently. And next week, I think they're employing their service. So. <laughs> I don't think people want how many um, are on them. And actually, it's worse to please. They're vulnerable to that. So they put you less options. Absolutely. Okay, um, next group, please. So we sort of, as we were sitting around clock. Um, so, which were the next group that was sort of there? Oh, I'll be the next group in regards to legislation. Um, so, we discussed people um, and antisocial behaviour in the time of planning and um, Sometimes we can miss out on some really good opportunities, and um, the planning process can take quite a while. Um, um, Things that um, external partners we could push for was again street lights, in roads, education, the infrastructure, the transport, these presence. If we could improve anything, it would be employment, better leisure facilities. And, and our top three priorities we would like the area committee to consider would be the youth and education, community maintenance, i.e. Lighting road, CCTV, um, and the planning infrastructure. Next group. Um, what we call the responsibility as far as council, we've got the clean green agenda, for example, focusing on flight and revenue collection. Um, on external partners, we missed the lack of transport links across the island. I think there aren't really many to get here. Um, I don't drive um, today because there is nothing. 
um, and the lack of health healthcare across the island in general. Um, the changes we'd like to see implemented are improved healthcare and improved, or you know, just any transport links. You know, select the one for something, and our three issues um, we'd like to take forward are healthcare, transport, and environment. Next group. Um, the big issue is for swell work that's what we have. Um, we've got a major issue now to deal with our bins. We've had bins disappear with not being advice. Bins we've got are in Africa because especially down in the spinning, we had open top bins and the seagulls don't have them every night. It's absolutely pointless. Every single use bins and then they're empty by the seagulls. So we need more bins, we need correct bins, we need recycling bins because the amount of refuge that is recyclable that's going straight to landfill because we're not giving recycling bins out is just ridiculous. And we need more poo bins um, and CCT, like big thing. Um, external partners, I mean, how long have you got? Uh, road cycling, big issue, big issue out there. Um, not just on the change of the but all the way around as well. It's just it, the death trap for bringing kids to school every day. It's, it's just frightening. Um, massive lack of doctor services. Yes, across the island is bad, but in Maytown, we, we can't even get things like children's immunizations and smear tests on around it. Because there is no medical services to do it around there. We have to travel 14 mile round trip into sheer mess. And I say, well, it's not, not fun to have a spin test done with your three children you on the other side of the curtain because you've got no other way to it. It's, it's no fun, it really isn't. Um, <coughs> highway maintenance, yeah, again, potholes, just the general mm -hmm. lack of upkeep. The emergency access route, which we discussed earlier, so we've got a big one. Yeah, with the drain, the drains, the highway names, and everything that's included in that. Um, bus services, again, yeah, as you should have with this, yeah, it's, we can't get to us, but we can't get out. That's a six foot. It's, it, it's affecting because of one of the opportunities, because if you can't get home from work, you can't get a job. It's, it's it's that simple. Um, cycle paths, yet yeah, again, brought up for the end of travel. Um, the road hubs, we have road hubs in place on Waterway Road, and they are completely inadequate. They've made them smaller, so the car just goes straight over them. The ones that were originally brilliant, the ones that have been placed over them are just completely pointless and it's actually quite dangerous for them to try coming down here on one tricycle and then you, you get not hit on the night. They're not going to try it enough again. Um, school access, uh, we've got one school. Um, so if you don't drive, you don't have There's a big road line and choices. <laughs> we don't have a choice. Um, and SEN access, yet again, also not a choice. And a big one for me personally is the air quality around here. Um, we live in a, a coastal area, coastal villages. There's no excuse for children in these parishes to be fearful for that stuff. And they are. Children, I mean, I nearly lost my own daughter at three weeks because of bronchitis. I didn't stop it. My husband's back outside the world. They're getting this because of the air quality around here. The farmers are burning plastic every month. And they get the wine from it, and the flight tickets that are being that are burning, and it's it, it it's horrendous. And there's ones that were burn up the top of the road in the middle of the day, and it filters down onto the skull. You come down here at lunchtime, and you smell you can smell the burning plastic in the air while children are flying in the like, Yes, <laughs> I mean, what's the best case scenario? They come down with. Tomorrow, they're burning again. Uh, uh, um, changes we'd like to say, well, I'm sort of going to run out of time, but um, one big issue is railings. If we could get railings along the, on the roads, easier, 
Christian demand on those down roads or all the road and the big truck goes along and just the roads and brown. Because they catch the clowns and put the white in the trucks. Also, it would just be the safe, just the safe place to fetch the end of the end, kid that can't run and can't run and run the drivers, then don't swerve because they can see the kid running. Um, we, we have a death last year on the road because the long lady had a habit of looking in the road, praying for their shit in the time. So, yeah, we need, we, it, it's a need, it's not a wish, we need babies along those roads to protect kids and solve them, not the else. All pedestrians. Um, we've got three issues we'd like to see. It, um, number one is emergency access. We've got to get emergency access to put in. Um, road safety overall needs to be improved and lack of health services. Yeah. And then I think there's one more group. Has anybody else got a report? No? Um, if I may, I'll, I'll collect it. So if there's anything that I've quite missed, I can note down. But if anybody has any ideas after this evening, if you sort of think, if you think about something else that wasn't mentioned, please email me, um, area committees at spell.gov.uk um, or, or any. any if you can't remember that that email address, then um, it, it, I'm sure there are other email addresses you you can get off the website, and it'll get through to me. Um, and um, but thank you ever so much, everyone. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's you know, we've, we've got this agenda that we've got to use else. And so, yeah, let's have the things as our three priorities. So, oh, by the way, don't forget about the coach park. And don't forget about this and that. Don't forget about the what will be just jobs, which aren't just jobs. We've got a lack of resources, diminishing resources, that's a lack of funding. And, and that's where your resources go. So, if we come up with out of the priorities here. We can't be saying, well, yeah, but can't we also ask for your staff to be doing this at the other as well? That yeah, we've really got to focus in on this. Because if it really, then we've all got to work together and not dilute it. We're saying, oh, yeah, we can continue on it. just do this. Just yeah, and I, if I may, um, it's been interesting to, to hear what you've um, been discussing, and actually, all of all being in your separate groups have pretty much said the same thing, which is nice. So, it's nice to see that. I think it'd be Whilst I'm not present at the other area committees, as you know, I, I, I support this one. It'd be interesting to see what comes out of the same discussion at each of the other ones, because of course the, all of the area committees are being asked the same questions and feed through. And obviously, we can we can update you on where that goes in terms of feeding into something and where it comes out the other end. I suppose my one observation on some of what you've said is it goes back to that. What can this committee do what, because it's not got funding? Because a lot of this is outside the scope of our district council. We talk about road infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. But it might be that it's through, as you say, it's through a lobbying or through working in partnership together or with other groups that we might see opportunities for. So it's not like we are saying that we might not be able to commit to delivering the ratings or the um, emergency access because that's not within our, our remit as a council. However, it's being on, it's, it's knowing that that's the important thing. And if things come up and we can be part, you know, work with the parish council to lobby or whatever, it's it's there. So I think that's what's important, I think, for this group is it's not just about now giving out funding, it's how do we work together as a collective to try and make things happen. And a good example of that might be 
an active project, an active travel project that requires funding from the parish council. And the discussion is had, and it's like, right, we, let's move forward. How can we get those drawings? I know we'll, we'll spend some money for our parish precinct, as an example. So it's it's thinking a bit more wider about what we can all do together, rather than it just. Which I think you, you you've got down to the teeth from what you've fed back. So you know it's, it's exciting to see what can come out of it, and then when there are specific borough-led projects like us, we can update and we can give that information and, and have that discussion as well. So, yeah, I think it's going to be an iterative process and it'd be interesting to see how this evolves over the next couple of months when the, the administration will develop its corporate plan and present it through to council. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's good to have those discussions with all the same ideas and then we can share what other people have done. Um, I don't know if you guys have that moment. Yeah, but yeah, it's also things like you know, we might be able to do it, but we could then have to feed into your back like a brilliant plan to get that all rolling. So we might not have the money. Yeah. Um, Residents of Sheffield wanted to see their councillors working together and pushing together in the same direction as the common good of every visit to the And I think that my personal belief is budget positions offer two opportunities to the negative connotations and they're positive. If all you want to look at it, generally the best product comes from putting resources at the point of low budget or not to different If this budget position allows people to Chief or residents more producers, more working together. I'd say we've got something good out there in the for those more than here. And I'd like to see my residents here. Morning. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chair. I think I've made the exercise. Just going back to your service services. I thought I see there's a mention there of the environment, uh, sorry, of water companies and fresh. And just as a point of information, I understand today that the second new pipe under the swale has been completed. So there are now three pipes under the swale. They need to be connected. <coughs> but hopefully that will mean that we don't end up in a situation where a couple of years back when we had a secret pipe failed <laughs> and there was no water coming off the island. So uh, I, I don't have to be, be the drum chairman. Southern water. Um, <laughs> but I will give them credit for at least uh, pushing forward with that particular investment. Keep, keep beating them because that isn't the weakest spot. <laughs> it's further down the line. Yeah. It's further onto the island. I'll speak it more seriously. Okay, thank you very much for that. The, the, next, the next item is public forum. Um, and to suggest items for future meetings. But I think the last thing we've just done is, is uh, superseded most of it. Um, With the exception of one thing. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say, it was included. It's on. Yeah. Right, the left side's last. Yes, but that wasn't included. It is still. Oh, it's done before. Okay. Yes. Just want to public forum is the only member of public forum. Just want to reiterate this with the police pistols. We need to lobby. The only time we seem to get a place on the arm is a couple of weeks down in the grid. We get three of them, so no. We used to have a monthly surveys in our two room. And a place to stop there and take the whole PCS up. Oh, and they've given up uh, emailing and talking to Matthew Scott. I even reported the other day that they had kids on the key uh, a panic truck into the creek that belongs to fishermen. Mm. I reported it, the police come back and said, well, You don't own it. It's not yours. So we can't do anything about it. It's thing. Then the cat's a cop, sir. You had a cat's a cop, sir. You had a cat's a cop, sir. Oh, that's a good 
Probably better both, honest. Um, well, my second question is just that and in Cranbrook overnight, three of the lead massive silent hotels have turned up in cold washer. We're not the only floating um, hotel. That's why we're doing it uh, in the in long first. Or they just put they more there on their way. Well, I was getting more than this, actually. They're not quite... They're just more there in the lab. Well, I'm not aware that they are docking here, but that doesn't mean they're not, so I will have to... I, will have to I think that the ones chairman and work in the main way in Rochester. They're not... They, 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 they were working on hotels, but the company went bust. Right, yeah, there's something in the bank. It's coming I mean, the only media saying it's true that I've seen is not here, but in the um, down by Swanage and Dorchester Way, isn't it? It's just it's yeah, it's, 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 it's not 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 it's um, and uh, other bits and pieces. So uh, that really completes that item. Local issues, uh, anything else they'd like to raise on behalf of local residents? We've dealt with most of them. Tom, you've got another one? Yeah, a couple of people have contacted me this way because some of them have shut down. And things haven't been collected. Yeah. You need to report any missed bins. I have advice from Tim Yeah, they have to do it. It's more just like a, it's more just like a generic concern that the southern water is shutting crimes, but not communicating effectively with the council, because then that plan should be in place. The yeah. driver can be accessed in both decks, and there's nothing to stop them from driving around and picking the old bins up. Okay. The advice was reported for future. Yeah, no, that is. Yeah. 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 When the road is closed like that, it, it is circulated. So we all get a copy of it, and all the other departments get a copy as well. So well, they should do. And then they should do another notification. Yeah. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Um, should we always give the name of the private office? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Yes. I'm sorry, I think it might have a couple of bits that I've been asked to report in from this day's environment meeting at the Town Council. Um, and that's the issues like Simon's mentioned on the east side and um, down in the Wheat Run. There's been reports that some of the fishermen want to erect fencing, um, and I know that, that has been battered to see in your teams. Um, I don't seem to know where this room has come from at the moment. Um, but I have been quite dangerous. Um, last summer, we had an incident where a boy was uh, injured with acid because it was thrown in his face because it was in a bit of soil left on the peak side by a fisherman. Uh, so, the town council were wondering if we could work with Swell to look at their current lease agreements to see what we can do to support the fishing industry and public safety. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm down to when the trawlers and they, when the lines out and the trawler moves out, they are stuck up the park. Okay, on then to item 11. There aren't any issues that have been referred to us from. Any of the service committees? Uh, do we wish to refer any items to the service committees? Well, I would suggest, Chairman, that the things that have been raised in the exercise yeah. 
we did earlier should form the basis of so a joint response. Yeah, that will be fed in, I think, to the service committee. Yeah. Anybody wishes to? I think that they're the one and the same thing, oh, right? Yeah, so I think oh, right. just, uh, different services, yeah. So either in the environment, in the house, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Unless I'm not aware of other service. <laughs> no, I think it's just the, the, the five, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay, I think that completes the agenda that I've got. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and I hope it has been a beautiful meeting for you.